Hey guys, we are back in another Honda Odyssey Elite this week, and I thought it would be interesting to make a video comparing this Odyssey to some of the other minivans we've driven lately, like the Kia Carnival. So I'm going to walk you around this. We'll give you a little bit of a refresher on what this new Odyssey Elite is all about. Oh yeah, and this is the Elite. This is the top trim Odyssey. 280 horsepower, 10-speed automatic, 3.5 liter V6, all the good things that you would love about your Honda Odyssey. This is just all reliable, all faithful. They've done some nice improvements, nice changes to this 21 model Odyssey. A little bit of a refresh, a little bit of a mild facelift, and you know, just an evolution of what I think is one of the better minivans out on the market. So, walking you around, we've got this updated front end. We've got some swoopier lines on the side of this. I like this new front end. Baby Topher is due in about three, four weeks here. So this is, uh, is this my future? Is this what I have to look forward to? I will say this Odyssey does make me feel a lot cooler than it probably makes me look. It is a fun minivan to drive. Tons of space. We've got the Honda Vac in the back here. I have heard though for the 22 model year, they're getting rid of this, which is like the best feature. Oh well, get a 21 if you want one while you still can. All these seats fold down beautifully. You've got tons of room. Um, in the back third row, you've got headphone jacks, a power outlet, a couple of cup holders. Really nice, easy car to configure and move things around to your preferences and use scenarios. New for this 21 model year are these sliding seats. So you can really, you can take the center section out, which hasn't been included in this car for testing purposes this week and you can get these kind of sliding seats that gives you really easy access to the third row, or you can just get really far away from your, uh, your passengers and socially distance in your Honda Odyssey. Lots of space, super comfortable place to be. We've got this entertainment screen back here with some apps. Pretty cool, though not as well integrated as the Kia Carnival that we had last week. Got your climate controls up here. This Elite has this really nice seat piping, excellent materials, fit, finish, feel in this Honda Odyssey, like all Honda products. It goes very high quality. Close the door with that button right there. Yeah, same Honda Odyssey. Very similar to what it always has been, just with some newer changes, newer tech updates. We've got a volume knob. Really great ergonomics, heated, cooled seats. Everything's a button, a physical control. It's very easy to use. A couple different drive modes, economy and normal. We even have a Blu-ray disc player down here. Lots of neat storage solutions down in the center console. We've got armrests. I've always liked the Honda Odyssey because I drove one with 300,000 miles out west on a trip to from Michigan, from Detroit, all the way to Washington State. And uh, I think it was just a champ. It was awesome. I think it was a 2001 Honda Odyssey. It was a company car. All it needed before we went on the trip was a steering rack and a set of new tires. And it was good to go. We changed the oil in Washington State and uh, drove it back. It was awesome. It was flawless. Got like 25 miles to the gallon with three people, tons of camping gear in the back. Great, great minivan. Let's jump into the driving portion of this. We're going to teleport to have Charlie here in the passenger seat and we're gonna give some thoughts on what this new Odyssey is like compared to some of its competition. And here he is. Cool. <laughs> Let's go do some minivanning. Yes, well, as we peel out. I was gonna say, you probably didn't even try to do that. <laughs> that is one cool thing about this Honda Odyssey is for the 3.5 V6, it is pretty fast. Well, in this... It'll chirp second. <laughs> this 3.5 liter is one of my favorite in any of its applications. The Ridgeline, it's a good engine. This, it's a good engine. The Pilot, Pilot Passport, it's a good engine. Kind of nice if you still saw it in the Accord. But it has a nice sound. It pulls really well. There's a lot of torque here. It does. And yeah. it's, a, it's a good usable sort of torque. It's not like even in this heavier application, you don't feel like you have to ring it out to get up and going. But the, the tuning, I think Chris Brower noticed it as well. It's a little aggressive down low if you're not in eco mode. You get, yes. if, if you get a little too hard on the throttle coming out of the uh, stop, you will chirp them. Absolutely. And this, this 10 speed, though it's good when you're driving around normally, when you're hustling, it tends to kind of be a little bit sluggish to respond and downshift sometimes. 
but I don't know. It's it's okay for for minivan drivers. You know, if you're gonna get a minivan, get a fast one. <laughs> Have some fun with, with your uh, Honda Odyssey. So we just drove the Kia Carnival. Yes. What were your thoughts on that? Because that was a really well-rounded. They call it an SUV or whatever, but it really it's a minivan. It's a van. Um, well great, packaged. Great tech. Yep. Really nice packaging. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Good warranty. Yeah. Good pricing. They did a lot well with it. I think a few of the minivan makers these days have, have been missing, like 90% of the way there, but missing a few weird things like Kia with those darn seats in the SX Prestige. I understand yes, you got that was weird. heated and ventilated second row seats, which is awesome, but you're talking about some amazing engineers. It's amazing they couldn't figure out some better way to get into the, the third row of that car. I've seen SUVs with better <laughs> yeah. third row access. So for those who didn't see the video, that we just had the Kia Carnival Prestige, the top trim, yep. and it was super difficult to get into the third row. You had to go through, all, jump through all these hoops to get the second row forward. Yeah, and, and it uh, was a slow process. There oh, wasn't it was a, a quick release like yeah. this has. But that's only a problem in the Prestige. Everything else, uh, right. it's it's normal. Well, and then you bring in the, the, the Chrysler Pacifica. Its new top trim also doesn't have stow-and-go seating. Yeah. Yeah, Which again is something weird. that is, is very much a staple of that car, of owning a minivan. Getting and, rid of the best features. Right, so you can tell minivans are kind of making this transition between SUVs and minivans. And I think the Odyssey still sticks to its guns. It knows an Odyssey buyer wants a minivan. Even when you look down the, the center area, very open, very spacious. You didn't get that with the Carnival. Yeah. Second row, very movable. They call the magic seats, easy to remove, easy to move around. Didn't get that with the Carnival. Speaking of getting rid of features that are awesome, the 22 Odyssey gets rid of the Honda Vac, which is one of my favorite features in this car. Yeah, I find that surprising. I, I'm finding less and less, I should say, fewer and fewer reasons to recommend the Odyssey over some of the other minivans. It was, for a while there, it was like, get the Pacifica if you want the best features and the, and the, and the best new van, get the Odyssey if you're going to own it for a while. Yes. But now you got the Toyota Sienna, a great competitor now with its hybrid all-wheel drive powertrain. Super fuel efficient. Yep. And that's great. the other thing is this Odyssey is only available in front-wheel drive only front wheel drive however yeah. we did in our testing we got 32 miles per gallon on the highway with this thing that's pretty good at 70 miles per hour it is wow. very good the uh, carnival only got 28 okay 28 or 29 so you know is one gonna break the bank the other not no i mean sometimes people but, do hundreds of thousands of miles in their minivan exactly. like exactly the the first odyssey that i ever drove had 300,000 miles on it right and it was great <laughs> and i think that's the best buyer for the Odyssey is someone who's going to own the car for a long time and or put on a lot of miles. A lot over a hundred thousand miles in the first five years. So where does where does do all these minivans rank in your mind? I'm kind of still thinking that Pacifica is first because it has stone go. It's so usable. It's just yep. it's a great formula. It's a nice V6, it nice looks transmission. Good for what it is. I know some people never say a van looks good. Yeah. But I think the Odyssey's Odyssey and Sienna are a little bit more strange looking. I think the Carnival looks great, I think the Pacifica looks great, and I think a lot of van owners buy vans and buy vehicles off of kind of just brand, I don't want to say loyalty, but brand perception, if you, you know, will. You know, and that's an interesting point, because this Honda Odyssey drives like a lot of the other Honda products yes. that are out right now, yep. but it has that sweet V6, mm -hmm. and I think this is my favorite to just get in and drive. Like, just it's the it. nicest to drive. Yeah. Um, it's not maybe, you know, got the best packaging or the best features or tech yeah. but it's just so nice to drive and, and that's really where this odyssey excels and uh the carnival kind of is a nice middle ground between all of them mm -hmm. but the pacifica like if you want a minivan to do minivan things yes stone go that's like that's your option that's great i, I think the most impressive van on the market is the pacifica yeah. especially having driven the facelift all the options and the new pinnacle trim I mean, they give you quilted uh, pillows for the second row seat. <laughs> I mean, right. they, they really do. And you still have the vacuum going into the next few model years for, that we know of. That's the most, uh, it, it, and, and it, it has all those things, but still manages to take away the driving experience and just look, you're focused on your kids, you're focused on your family, you're focused on your job. You don't need to worry about your car. We learned last year from Honda that Odyssey buyers are their oldest demographic. I think you'd be Look at all the Broncos, Broncos without their chips. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so there's many of so them. Many. They're everywhere. And there's so many different parking lots around yep. Ypsilanti with these. They're just getting filled up with wow. Broncos. It's 
So spin. you ordered your Bronco. There it is, <laughs> just chilling in the sun. Some of them look really neat. Oh man. We we learned the Odyssey. It's their oldest demographic for for vehicle buyers. So I think we're dealing with a lot of brand loyalty and a lot of money. I yeah, think they probably right. sell a lot of these elite trams, a lot of the higher trams, and people. This is a fifty thousand dollar minivan. Yeah. Yep. So I think the Carnival's a better van for a younger buyer. You're getting a longer warranty. Mm -hmm. You're getting some point. more cool, usable features. You gotta admit, even though CarPlay works decently and it's a it's a fine infotainment system, it's getting swept up by the new Uconnect Five. Yeah. The, the the Kia system, which is still a little basic, but has that giant screen. The blind spot monitor camera right in the dash, which I gotta admit is useful for this segment. You're dealing with long vehicles, distracted drivers. I think Honda has a solid meat and potatoes product here, but quirks kind of sell this this class in a lot of ways for a lot of buyers. And what are you getting anymore? You're just getting good functionality and that's it. And good driving. And a lot of people are moving into SUVs. They've moved on from their minivans and they're yep. getting Kia Tellurides or mm. Toyota Highlanders. Yeah, I mean, yep. that's maybe not as spacious of a vehicle. Right. The, uh, or, the, Hon or Honda Passports. Yeah. Or Passports and Pilots. Passports and Pilots. The Subaru, what was the Subaru we the drove? Ascent. The Ascent. That's almost a minivan right. in terms of space. Like, it's enormous inside. Yeah. Well, the packaging of a minivan still shouldn't be ignored. The fact that you can take yeah. out the rear seats so easily and you can slide them around. You got the um, the feature on here, which I know you can get in some SUVs as well, but the um, I swipe away where you get it, but cabin watch. That so is can, nice. So you can have your kids you know, sitting in their car seats. You can look in on them, see what they're doing back there. Spy cam. Yep. You, you, when you fill a van like this up with six people and their stuff, you can't beat a van. But I think there are a lot of people who buy vehicles for the occasion when they need more space and they're typically only driving around with two or three or maybe four people and yeah i i see why you'd rather have a little bit more off the ground you'd rather have a little bit better styling what we need SUV. is a minivan that's all-wheel drive lifted about eight or nine inches off the ground <laughs> all you know throw some tires on there mm -hmm. and uh it just kind of it's an overlander minivan when will minivan companies catch on. We're close with the Pacifica because you can get all-wheel drive now. That's right. Pacifica. And you and can you still get stow-and-go with that. You can get like the handicap lift kit. There you go. Yeah. You know, no, I, I think the Odyssey is still a great Odyssey. It really is. It's a great Honda product. It's very much the Accord of minivans. I mean, they, the Accord's not the flashiest or coolest sedan yeah. in this market anymore, but there's still an innate satisfaction to driving one. And the same applies to, to this Odyssey. Let's take a look out back here. I mean, yeah, you can remove these seats, but they are gonna be heavy. I like that you can slide them around though and get easy, easy access to the third row. Yeah, and you get this as well. Yep, that's great. Just one swift movement. Yep. No, I think this is a lot easier. It's kind of, this is in the middle between the usability of the Carnival and the practicality of the Pacifica. I mean, right. uh, much better than the Carnival, a lot more spacious in here, I think, even though the Carnival does have class leading in cabin room, that's probably with everything out. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to fit a ton of stuff in any of these minivans. I don't think anyone's gonna be disappointed by an Odyssey. If you, if you have your heart set on getting one of these, it has the, the core functionality, little things like putting your devices up in this little pocket, You've got air vents where you need them. You've got third row climate control. A little this bit going infotainment on. isn't as sweet can't, and smooth no, as. You can't touch it. There's, there's a remote. Oh, it's not even a touch screen. That's no, right. Yeah. I was pressing it like a like a, an idiot <laughs> Getting earlier. Getting your fingerprints all over it. Yeah. But oh man, that's from 1997. So you know, just some just some thoughts revisiting the Odyssey. If you want to see my original review of this, uh, check it out. It's on the Topher YouTube channel. Um, I was very sleepy that morning, so I'm kind of monotone and, and drab. <laughs> I think but people appreciate that in your review. That's right? okay, yeah. The smooth tones of, of the toker. We've had some fun in this thing this week. This is a fun minivan to hustle around, and uh, the engine is definitely, if you're a performance-minded person watching these videos, chances are uh, you're going to really appreciate this 3.5 liter V6. Put the seats down in the back, take out the middle. This would easily be the fastest minivan around the track. Yeah, weight reduction. Absolutely. Yeah cool. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Charlie from Daily Motor. Go check out his channel. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.